okay, we're going to look at different layouts. Uh, that really is the point of this series of classes is to look at different ways that you can lay out your pages. And uh, we will get through some more today. Um, some uh, we may not get to, but they are on Canvas for you to review. Remember, you know, this being a blended class, that which we don't cover during our lecture, you know, there's online materials to supplement that and that you can review. So we'll try to get as much as we can in today. But uh, if you look in the week eight module, you'll see that there's some. Um, Grid, flexbox, responsive design, and so on. Screen's not on, so you can't see that. If we don't cover these today, uh, please take a look at them. The grid layout, the flexbox layout. Uh, Responsive design, CSS Zen Garden, which I have already showed you, and and so on. Uh, next week is spring break. Uh, that means that there is no class. There will be no regularly scheduled office hours during spring break. Uh, if you want to reach me, you can email me. And if you need to uh, talk to me in more detail, I will still schedule appointments next week. But there's no like regular office hours where I'm just sitting around waiting for people to log on. Okay, uh, and then again, class will resume not next week, but the week following next week. And we'll pick up with week nine. Okay. Let's look at prototype three. And this is a little bit different layout. Notice that it's still kind of fixed. In other words, as I as I resize the window, it doesn't really change. In this case, what I do is I assign to each section in the CSS a position. So, for example, the header. specify position absolute, that means that it gets nailed down in that spot. It doesn't matter if you, you know, if you scroll the screen, it follows that spot. So it will scroll off the page. Top left, that means 10 pixels from the top and 10 pixels from the left, the top and left mean. So this glues down this header at position 10 from the top, 10 from the left, and that position is absolute. I do that with each of the elements of the page. I'll do that with the nav. I give a top of 150, a left of 10. Again, position absolute. So with the section, with 500, top 150, left 300, position absolute. So this is just like cutting out those boxes and laying them and gluing them down on the on the web page. It's absolute. So if we if we uh, resize the window, do anything along those lines, it has no impact of it. This used to be a very popular style of web pages, and that's one of the reasons I go over it, just in case you were working on a website and use this technique. Uh, with mobile phones, this is not necessarily a good idea because uh, things viewed in a mobile web browser don't look good generally if there are multiple columns. You can go here, the developer's tools, and we can see what this page would look like different mobile consoles, like on an iPhone. 
14 Pro Max. It looks like that. Generally speaking, you don't want to have multiple columns on a mobile website. And we'll talk about ways that you can make that happen, where it is single column only on a website. This is called absolute positioning. You define a position as absolute. And you specify a left, top, a left. You could do a bottom and right if you want, but usually you consider the top left corner of the page and position everything in relation to that. And do I do anything else interesting on here? Uh, I do something interesting with the links. Where I give them sort of a flat button look. One. When a mouse goes over it, it changes colors and reverses the colors. That's further indication that this is a link to the user. All right, prototype four. These will probably not spend quite as long on as we did the first couple of prototypes. This is achieved with relative positioning. Now, if there's no CSS to the page, I'm going to go and rename the CSS file. So there's no CSS to the page. The browser wants to put things in certain positions by default. Puts the footer up here, puts the navigation here, puts the section here, puts the footer down here. With relative positioning, we describe what's different between the default and what we want. Let's look at relative positioning for this. The header, we don't do anything with positioning. Therefore, it gets positioned exactly where the browser wants to put it by default. With the nav, however, Might be confused about which one this is. Oh, I see what's different. We made this scroll bar. And we've used, well, here we go. This is the one I was thinking, I just got ahead of myself. Nav, we give a, a margin from the top of 30, so it drops it 30 below the top thing, and it positions it where the browser ordinarily would put it. Now, this section, remember the section when we displayed it with no style, was down here. We specify now for the section that the position is relative, and we want to push it from the left 250 pixels. We're going to push it towards the top 380 pixels. That's what the negative means, means it pushes it up. So left means we push it from the left to the right. Top would normally push from the top towards the bottom, but since we put a negative number, it pushes this up. 
So it puts this alongside of that. Remember, we're comparing, we're comparing this to the way it would display if there was no CSS. So these relative positions change the position of where it normally would appear. So all we have to do is say a position relative and specify how we want to change it from the left and from the top. And we do the same thing on the bottom. Pull it up towards the top 350 pixels. And that's it, position relative. So normally, if you remember, this was way down here. This pushes it up to here. Now we did something else with this. We made the section scroll. We did that by saying overflow auto. If we don't do that, this will be as tall as it needs to be. Uh, but we put in a height and we put in overflow auto and that only makes it a certain size. And then we can scroll if we want to scroll vertically. Prototype five is a cool one, if I remember right. Yeah. In this case, we use something a little bit different for this position. We use a position of fixed. That glues down this to a particular spot within the window. So in other words, it doesn't scroll along with the page. Look at the CSS for this. Notice the nav has a position of fixed. 10 from the top, 10 to the left, position of fixed. The difference between fixed and absolute is absolute scrolls. When you scroll the page, the content will scroll as well. If you use fixed, it's at that position within the window and it will not scroll. You then give all of these other things a margin, left margin of 300 to push them past this. That way, this navigation doesn't overlap with these items. This is a nice design for this. So again, I said before that Generally speaking, in mobile devices, you don't want it to be two columns. You only want a single column. Well, you might ask then, why am I showing you this design? And the reason is, is you can actually define separate style sheets to apply for mobile and desktop computers. So we could have our desktop looking like this, our desktop version of the page look like this. That's a decent design for this page. Right, we keep the navigation always visible, even as you scroll through the page. Go along. But we could have a different style sheet for mobile. We'll look at how to do that the week after we come back from spring break. But just know that any of these things that I say aren't good for mobile, it doesn't mean you can't use them. It does mean that you would probably use a different style sheet for mobile, however. Well, again, we'll look to see how to do that when class resumes. This last one is accomplished by what's called floating. I'm going to look briefly at this float example. That's how these things are alongside of each other. Until they get a certain size, then they switch to single column. Also notice that they are right aligned instead of left aligned. Let's take a look at how we do that. Start out by looking at the HTML. We simply have our 
page that has two sections in it, along with a footer. In the CSS, you specify that for the section, we float to the right. Right? Let's look at what that means. It means if there's space, display the first one pushed all the way to the right. If there's space on alongside the first one, we put the second one from the right of the first one towards the right. So we push it this direction. And if there's enough space, Alongside of it, we'll put it right alongside of it. So let's look at how big these are. These are 45% of the screen. All right. So they take up 45% of the screen. Plus, there's a one pixel border. So on each side, that would be a total of two pixels. There's a 10 pixel padding. So on each side that would be 20 pixel padding. And the margin is for uh, 20 pixels. So on each side, it would be 20 pixel. Or, yeah. Uh, it actually would be 20 pixel, not 40 pixel. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, so essentially, this is 45% plus 42 pixels. So it's a little more than 45%. And when it's a certain width, those two will fit alongside of each other. However, when we get to a, a length of a certain size, we can no longer fit that second one right alongside the first, so it drops below. I did a float right just to demonstrate that you can do that. More common would be the float left. as we could make the screen, if the screen hits a certain size, it floats alongside underneath it. We could also do a minimum width on this, and that declares that it won't be any smaller than the width that we've defined. So I can say minimum width, 400 pixels. So that means as it gets smaller, it won't get any less uh, than 400 pixels. it's stuck at that size. Now, if you think about this from a mobile perspective, this is pretty cool, right? Because remember on a wide monitor, we probably want multiple characters because it's hard to read something all the way across the screen. With a phone, however, we don't want multiple columns. We want a single column. And that's exactly what this layout does. So remember with float, it will put it along, it will put each section in this case alongside the other one, provided there's space for it. If there's not sufficient space, it will drop it below. Now, interestingly enough, I put a margin of 20 pixels here. So there's 20 pixels from the side. Margins don't add up the way that you might think they would. In other words, there's not 40 pixels between these two, there's just 20 pixels. Because that says, well, we want this one 20 pixels away from this one. We want this one 20 pixels away. It doesn't add them up and make some uh, uh, 40. It just keeps it at 20 because that satisfies the style rule. Both of the sections are 20 pixels away from the other section. So we have uh, kept the style rule. Now, when we take this and apply this to an actual page, we get something like this. It'll be like that until we hit a certain amount. 
and it drops below. Now you'd need to do a little bit of cleaning up this, but you can see this is already moving in the direction of having a website that works both on a mobile device and on a desktop device. If I put, let's say, a minimum width on this, Alongside of it and drops below. We put a minimum width on this, and navigation look like this until we got to a certain size and then it would look like this. Well, that's actually starting to look pretty good for um, what a mobile site would be. A few more tweaks to this and we could have uh, a page that works both in a mobile um, browser and on a desktop browser. That's the goal, and we can accomplish it with one style sheet in some cases. In other ca cases, we use separate style sheets for both. All right, let's look at some of the examples that are in this week's. These are all the examples that were in last week's folder. Let's look at the examples this week. And there's two of them. Two main examples. There is a grid view and there is a box box. There's a guide to the CSS grid. And there is a lot of information about it, and it shows you how to build it. Here it is. Example of a grid view. There's a site about Star Wars. Now notice that it's lo it looks like this. So it looks similar to what I had before, but it looks a little different. Let's look and see. Let's look at the HTML and let's look at the CSS for this. HTML should be pretty uh, should be pretty um, familiar looking. We have our header, our nav, our a uh, couple of sections, and a footer. I open up index two, index one. There we go. So we have our header, 
goes across here. We have our nav. Then have a series of sections. Section, 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 so on. And then finally, we have our footer. Let's look at the CSS for this. Oh, we did one other thing. We put the whole body in a wrapper, uh, a wrapper div. This facil facilitates the use of the grid layout, and we'll see how we do that in a minute. So a wrapper we define is going to be a grid. What we mean by a grid, we mean like a, like a checkerboard or like something like an Excel worksheet, something where there's rows and columns. You can see the rows, there's columns in this design. The grid gap is the space between each grid item. We said 10 pixels. So notice there's a little bit, there's about 10 pixels between each of these grid items. We specify the columns, it's three columns 20%, 30%, and 30%. So if you notice, this one is being the narrowest one because that's only 20%, the other two are 30%. And then finally, we specify that the minimum width is 600 pixels. So it will not get any smaller than this. Now, what do we do for each part of the grid? Because header, the nav, and each of these sections are part of the grid. Well, we specify that the header starts in column one and goes through column four. Now this is a little goofy, right? Because the header covers three columns. One, two, three. Yet we give this number as the end as being four. So the end is one more than how many columns it covers. So when I say the start column is one, the end column is four, that means that this header covers columns one, two, and three. So one, two, and three. Each section, we don't have any any uh, thing defined for that. And what that means is each one takes up one column and one row. So you notice this is a row, one column. And with the nav, we say that the grid row start is two, and the row end is five. So we're doing this across multiple rows. We start at two and we go through uh, row three and four. So this is three rows long. So it goes over one, a row two rather, three and four. That's why it goes down like that. We change this to four, let's say. This only covers rows two and three, and then this section gets put underneath it. But if we do five, it covers rows two, three, and four. I use a grid layout to recreate one of the other layouts that I did.
this one, I only have one section. I have my header, I have section and footer. My CSS, you almost figure it out without looking. Let's not look at the CSS for the first. So the header covers, uh, or what, what, what does the grid look like? The grid's going to have two columns in it, all right? I'm going to guess the grid is it's about 25% of the screen, and this is about 75%, something like that. Actually, a little less than that. Maybe this is 20, and this is 50, let's say. Because you can see this is narrower than that. Two columns we have, say 20 and let's say 50. This goes over columns one and two. Therefore, the start column is going to be one and the end column is going to be three. This covers columns, or this covers row two and three. So this is going to start at row two and end at row four. So two and three means it starts at two and ends at four. And each, neither of these are going to have uh, any rows and columns. They're, they're just going to be one row and one, uh, well, no, I lied. This is going to be one row and one column. This is going to be like the header where it uh, covers uh, columns one through three. So let's look at the CSS and see what we've done. My wrapper again. Well, I have 20 and 70, so I was a little off on that. There's two columns, minimum with the 600, gap is 10 pixels. The header starts in column one, ends in column three, so that means it covers columns one and two. The nav. Mistake. The nav doesn't cover two rows. The nav is just one column and one row. Likewise with the section. And the footer covers also two columns. We could use a grid view to produce something like this, which is something that we did. And it was a little trickier to do using absolute or relative positioning or floating. You could do it using those modes, but uh, the grid is a, a much more simple, straightforward way of getting a look that looks like this. Let's look at the flex box. Or other. This, this is, let's look at the difference between the flex box and the grid. It is always going to be consist of rows and columns. It's always going to consist of the same number of columns, no matter how small we make the page. Flexbox is more flexible. In other words, at its biggest width, we have two columns, but as we get narrower, we get down to one column. Again, this should be this should be a cue to you that this, some, this or something like this is something that we might very well do on a mobile a page that we want to be mobile compatible. Because as I mentioned before, multi columns is good for a desktop. Single column is good for uh, a mobile. HTML is the same that we had before. The 
and a nav and a bunch of sections and a footer all wrapped in a div wrapper that goes around everything. Look at the CSS for this. The wrapper we indicated is a display of flex. And flex wrap we turned on to wrap this. Controls whether the flex container is single line or multi line. Since we said wrap, that will make this flex box a multi multiple line. Header, we've given a width of 100%. Section, we've given a width of 40%. Nav, we've given a width of 40%. Footer, we've given a width of 100%. So all we have done. It specifies this is a flex box and how wide each of these things are, and the browser figures out how to place these things. If I change this to, let's say, 30% for the nav, 30% for each section. get three sections along each side, uh, alongside of each other. Why is that? Because we made a flex box. So it, if it can fit, it's sort of like the float. If it can fit in the next thing, it will put it alongside of this. If it can't fit it in, it will drop it down to the next thing below. Yet we still kind of have a grid look to it, which is good because web designers and any kind of graphical des graphic designer loves uh, it's. And again, this is not bad on a mobile device if we look at a narrow width. Single column. A little bit of, of manipulation, we could make this look really good on a mobile device. Now we're going to touch on something today and we'll definitely cover it more after the break. That is a mobile example. We have time, this would be great to review in advance prior to when we return from uh, the spring break. This example, a couple variations of it, this is how this page will look like on a on a mobile or on a uh, desktop display device. When it gets to be a certain size, it pops into a simpler layout. And that's a very common sort of model for pages. You have more complex or more involved multi-column design for a desktop computer, and you have a simpler single column design for a uh, for a mobile device. We actually do that by
specifying two style sheets. Along with what's called a media query. We'll go over this in more detail, but just to introduce you, this style sheet gets applied in all cases. This one applies only if the screen is at least 800 pixels wide. So that's why how we can see that on a narrower screen, once we go beyond, beyond that threshold of 800 pixels, we get this style sheet. That style sheet or uh, I'm sorry, the other way around. Once we get above the threshold of, of 800 pixels, we get this style sheet that has the more complicated elements in it. All right, a few important things. Uh, this week, is due your first draft of your portfolio. March 6th, so that's due this Wednesday. Remember of what I talked about portfolios and directories on, and how to put things in a directory and refer to them. Uh, that's you, that's typically the biggest problem people have. I, I saw people uh, having difficulty, you know, putting links or creating images because of the way that they put the, the folders in there. But review my folder uh, portfolio example that we had a few weeks back to see how we do that. So that is due this Wednesday. The next assignment is due March 20th. So you have two weeks to do that because I didn't want to make an assignment due during spring break. So you can certainly still ask me questions during spring break. I'll be answering my email. You can ask for an appointment for spring break. Uh, but uh, I won't be having regular office hours. All right, that's all I had today. Uh, we'll either see you in lab or we will see you after spring break.